Hi, welcome to the Review of Veterans and Community Show. Today we have a real special guest, a hero of heroes, Chief Sepp Caffarelli. Thank you for coming, Thank sir. Thank you very much, Morris. Thank you. Before we start the show, could you tell us a little about yourself, how you first, uh, your education, how you got involved in police work? Sure. I was born, in, uh, born and raised in Revere. I grew up on Mountain Ave. Um, my, my mother still lives, and my father recently passed away, but he lived there up his, almost his entire life. Went to school in Pope John, uh, actually, elementary school was Immaculate Conception, and my high school was in Pope John. And upon graduating from, the high, school, uh, from high school, I went in the Marine Corps. Uh, and I will say that after 12 years of parochial school and nuns, the Marine Corps was a breeze. Boot camp was no problem. Um, the, the discipline is, uh, they, could, they could take lessons from some of the nuns that I had. <laughs> okay. And I served uh, in the 2nd Marine Division in Camp Lejeune for, from there, I, several deployments, uh, one of which was in Beirut. Um, Lebanon? Beirut, Lebanon, after the, uh, the bombing yeah. that took place. We were on, uh, that was in the 80s, wasn't that it? That was in 1983, correct. Yep. And uh, speaking of monuments that, uh, that are prevalent in history, we have our monument. We have one in Boston for the Massachusetts Beirut veterans that were killed. There was nine Marines that were killed in, uh, from, from Massachusetts that were killed in the Beirut bombing. And there's a memorial for them in the Columbus Park area of, uh, in the North End. Wow. Uh, we're we're tr gonna rededicate it at the 30th anniversary this year. And as all, we're also the, going, gonna be attending the 30th anniversary uh, of the bombing in the, the, the main memorial in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, which is on October 23rd of this year. Right, you know, talking about the Marine memorials, I was in Washington mm -hmm. just the other day and I went to visit the Iwo Jima Memorial, and I saw a bunch of Marines still in their uniform around there looking at the monument, and I heard one of them says, see the one that's hanging that flag that was holding that big flag up? Yeah. It was the 5th Marine Division. I didn't mm -hmm. know which one it was, but I mean, I was listening to them talk, and he said there was a pharmacist there yeah. who put a thing in the ground, so uh, uh, it's made me feel real good. Yeah, real the good. Marine Corps doesn't have its own medics or chaplains, so medics, uh, which we call corpsmen, and right. chaplains are supplied by the Navy. So there's five Marines and one sailor in that, oh. in that memorial. And the, the one sailor, is he's the, the longest surviving. He's right. only one of three men that survived that, that particular battle yep. of, the, of the original six to raise that flag. Right. But by the way, I've got to ask you, how old were you when you first went into the Marine Corps? I was 17. And I've got to be honest with you, I was 17 when I first mm -hmm. went into the Army in World War II. The war had just about ended yeah. over there. And there. So, uh, well, thank you for your service. Oh, uh, but let me thank you for yours. We're two veterans. Thank you. Okay. You're a, but you're a double veteran. You're a veteran of the military and a veteran of the community. Oh, well, you're doing we, the police work, and you protect the seniors. And we need a lot of protection in our way. That's why we take this job, to, to we protect love to people who can't protect themselves. That's why you do it. That's why we're here. We'd love to have you, Chief. I got to, how long have you been Chief, by the way? Uh, a little a year? over a year. A little over a year now. Right. And what are the future plans? Oh, I got to uh, This is something I wanted to ask you. I spoke to one of your police officers, and I just want this for myself and for the community. He told me that when you're driving, the pedestrian has to ride away all That's the time. Correct. That's correct. But he also says something to me, so correct me. If you're on the walk, you know, the walk, mm -hmm. and you go on to the walk while the pedestrian is there, you can also get a fine of $500 if you're driving while he's, the pedestrian is walking. I'd have to look up the fine amount, but yeah, it is a citation. Right. But, uh, okay, but if you hit him in the walk, you're completely wrong. But he says if a pedestrian is outside the walk and he should get hit by a car, it's not... I mean, the crime it, it, is not as so bad as this is if you had him in the walk. It, it's, it would depend uh, on the circumstances involved. I mean, there's, you, know, you couldn't just say out what one is more serious than the other. They're both serious. Anytime you have a pedestrian accident, it's very serious. It's a very grave situation. So the situation would dictate. In that, right. In that, and then the thing I would like to ask you, Chief Caffarelli, is um, I don't know if we have that law here, but in Florida, they have the right to stand law, you know, to stand mm -hmm. by. Doesn't that interfere with your police work, really? Because, I mean, when you think of it like if someone is coming at me with really no harm and I shoot him, and I could say I have the right to defend myself, what they call the right to stand mm -hmm. law there, doesn't that interfere with your job? To, to I mean, it makes it harder well, for it, you it, to it, determine who's who. It, again, it depends on, on the situation. I mean, you know, we, we, you, everybody has the right to defend themselves. Right. Um, to what extent? 
Okay. You know, sometimes uh, discretion is the better part of valor. Um, but sometimes you need to you, you need to defend uh, yourself in, in in your 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 loved ones. So right, but again, the situation is going to depend on, on on a number of different factors. Okay. Next question, if I may ask you, sure. sir. So what breaks into your house? Mm -hmm. Regardless, do you have the right to kill? It? Yes. I mean, do you really have the right to kill such a person? Is your life in danger? I don't know. Let's say I don't know. I don't know if he has a gun or a knife. I have no idea. But I, but I have a family with two little kids, three little kids. Well, the deciding factor on, on a situation such as that is your mindset. I mean, do you feel as if you're in, in danger of, of... Oh, definitely. Then you have a right to defend yourself by whatever means. To say that you have a right to kill somebody, that, that's not correct. Police officers don't have a right to kill somebody. Um, they have a right to stop an attacker, an aggressor, to, pr to protect themselves or to protect others. Right. Now, what defines stop? Okay, that isn't to say we have a right to kill somebody. We have a right to stop them by whatever means necessary to include the application of deadly force. Um, if there are other means to, do, to stop that threat, then we will do so. But ultimately, if it comes down to it, we have a right to apply deadly force. Um, it may or may not result in somebody dying, but to say that we're going to, we go out to kill, so that, that, that isn't correct. We, 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 and, and you as, as, as well, anybody who owns a, a permit to carry, may own a handgun or whatever, we use whatever uh, means necessary to defend themselves. You have a right to defend yourself and to stop the threat, not to kill. Nobody has that right. Um, but to defend yourself by whatever means necessary. Um, you know, if somebody's coming at an officer with, um, Let's say I'm coming with a vehicle. I, I'm, I want to run you down. You have a right to shoot me down. Not necessarily. Um, is that? But I'm coming to kill you, sir. I understand that. But is shooting the driver going to stop the vehicle, or is that vehicle going to continue on now out of control? Suppose we're in front. I don't know. I get, there you go. The, the, <laughs> these are decisions that an officer has to make That's why before he officer. before he pulls the trigger. So he or she pulls the trigger. So. It, it's impossible to say, uh, you know, you know, we, we just, any time that there's a, a shooting that involves a motor vehicle, does an officer have a right to shoot at that vehicle to stop him? Is, is his life in danger? It may be. Is simply stepping to the left or right out of the path of that vehicle going to put him out of danger? It might. So to shoot the driver and now render that vehicle out of control in proximity of other people, is that the most prudent thing to do? Um, it, it, it depends on the circumstance. You know what I mean? Suppose you were in front of a, 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 the pedestrian in the crosswalk, and if, if an officer shoots the driver, the vehicle is now out of control, and run, runs, runs, uh, runs over the pedestrian. Now, who's responsible for that death? I would assume the one in the vehicle, not the officer. He's dead. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's, uh, it, these are decisions officers have to make. You need to know uh, w w your target, you need to know what's beyond it and what's going to be the ramifications of uh, that application of deadly force. There's a, there's a lot of things that need to, that to that's why the training, a bit, that's why training that, is so, so pertinent. That's what I was going to ask you next, uh, your training. How many weeks do you go to train to be a police officer? Or how many months? Right now, the police academy is, um, I want to say, breathing hot on six months. Six months? Six months of, of training, correct. When I went, it was... Uh, I think it was around four months, but uh, right. it, it seems to get longer. Uh, in, in I've always been a very, very strong uh, advocate for training. You cannot train enough. Um, I, I wish I had more money to, to train my officer. We do, we do the best we can with what we have, but six, six months of training. So even when I hire an officer, even by the time we, we do a, a background investigation, put him into the academy, and then have a field training program afterwards, it's a year. It takes a, really, it takes a full year to bring an officer from hiring him to putting him on the street, him right. or her on the street. Now, I've got to ask you, I'm a veteran. I just mm -hmm. come home from the service, just like you did when you were in the Marines. I want to become a police officer. How do I go about doing that, sir? You take the civil service test, which right. is, I want to say it's every two years, and I believe it's in the spring sometime in April. Yep. Um, there is a provision for uh, preference for to veterans. veterans. Good. Um, second only to disabled veterans. And there's one category that's above the survivors uh, that were either killed or permanently disabled in the line of duty, you know, right. of police officers, like children of, of police or fire that have been killed in the line of duty, they would get preference over them. So there's, there's that category. 
disabled veterans and veterans. That's so take, good the, take that test and you'll, you know, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed a, a, a pretty high position. So the one who asked me that question out there, you heard that from the police chief himself. Mm -hmm. I would like to say this. I, we had an officer, I think he retired, his name was Carl Borgioli. Mm -hmm. Years ago, he started a crime watch for us uh, residents. And we had a bad drug problem in the city of Revere. Mm -hmm. It has gone down tremendously now, and the crime rate has gone down tremendously now. But you have less police officers now than you did when I was. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, what is the reason? For it? Is it the money, or is it just the, uh, you can't find good ones? No, it, a lot of that is funding. Um, you know, the, the past uh, decade or so, it's, we, we fell on hard times. Um, Funding citywide has, has decreased, and we suffered. Uh, you know, as a result, right, we, we, our, our manpower there. went down significantly. Uh, we have been able to maintain various technology-based uh, initiatives that have helped us. You know, to monitor crime and, and uh, you know, address crime trends, and so and so forth. So that helps us deploy our officers where where necessary. But uh, I'm trying to bring our numbers back up to, uh, to where they should be. We, we have seven officers in the academy right now, and I'm looking to hopefully in, in the next fiscal year to find some room for some more. Good. Now, can I uh, have you answer me? The requirements, not, not about being a veteran or anything, the education requirements that you need before you could even become a police. You have to have a high school education. You have to have a high school diploma, correct. Right. How about college? It's not a requirement. I, I think you may see that sometime in the near future that there will be a requirement for some sort of a uh, college degree, but at present it's a high school diploma and right. driver's license. So a person who was, let's say, in the service in the constabulary or the MPs, mm -hmm. and he gets out and he, he applies to become, he would have greater preference than, for example, me as a civilian. Just due to his uh, military Terry background, right? Yeah, right. It, it, irregardless of what your uh, occupational specialty may have been, whether it's MP or infantry or whatnot, your, your veteran status is what counts. See, I'm glad you say that because we got a lot of veterans of Revere that are getting out of the service and Absolutely. some of them want to become Correct. police officers. Correct. Let them come and see you, Chief. I'd, uh, I'll welcome them <laughs> with open arms. <laughs> I got to ask you about the citizens now of the city of Revere. We have a lot of. I had. Uh, Sergeant Silvetti up here, he was talking about scams. And He'll appreciate the promotion. He's, he's, a, he's a patrolman, but I'll, uh, I'll let him know that you call him Sergeant. I'll, Would I'll you let him mean, know. Uh, I, well, he's going to be a Sergeant <laughs> someday. Uh, I mean, he's been 19 years on the police yeah, force, yeah. and he's a terrific gentleman. Uh, I man. say gentleman, but he's also a terrific police officer and a terrific community veteran mm -hmm. for us 19 years in there. I got um, the Chief Reardon, the, the one that was before you, mm -hmm. Is he still on the police force? Yes. So how does that work? I'm I'm just curious. You know, like uh, he reverted back to his permanent rank of captain. Oh, is that how it goes? Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, what are your future plans uh, for building up the? I mean, for doing for the city. Oh, before we start, can I ask you one sure. other thing? Sure. Absolutely. I know this is going to sound crazy, but I got to do it. A lot of people complain. I hear them on the talk shows. I see them on TV. I see them in the street. They complain about cameras, Big Brother watching mm -hmm. you. But if it wasn't for Big Brother watching you, those two little rascals that you happen to become a hero over, Joka, whatever his name, Joka Zanayev and his brother Tom mm -hmm. there, that did the Boston Marathon. Without those cameras, I don't think they would have been caught. You're right. No, and it's it, technology is the wave of the future. That's that's uh, a way of life in the 21st century. The, we, there is a, any any retail establishment right now, from a 7-Eleven to Macy's, they has cameras. has cameras. They all do inside uh, and in, outside. Some, just sometimes both. It depends. You know, again, money is uh, drives that train. It's what uh, what they can afford. Um, there's a number of different uh, Department of Justice initiatives that we've been involved with, with grants and whatnot, that provide cameras around schools, around... Uh, um, banks? Well, banks pr have their own. They use their own. Oh, and they, they pay for they, them. They, they, they'll put their own surveillance up. We won't necessarily target uh, a bank with a camera, but maybe um, high traffic areas, a lot of traffic, you know, uh, uh, motor vehicle traffic areas will have cameras. Um, high pedestrian traffic areas, um, there's, we have uh, 
dozens of cameras throughout the city that we, you know, we don't necessarily monitor them to what, watch who's walking and coming and going. No, I know, but in case something happens, you have a... Correct. After the fact, we'll, we'll review our, our footage and see what we have, and if, if uh, luck is on our side, we will capture the crime in progress, and that'll help us to make an arrest. And it, it's technology that it's, um, it, it's a way of life. I mean, you know, 22 years ago when I came on the police department, people didn't have video cameras. Now, everybody has a video camera on their belt in the form of an iPhone. Um, That's right. So it, it, the, its cameras are there. They'll always, they're, they're not going to go away. Te in fact, I think w w as technology progresses even more, they're going to be even more and more convenient, more prevalent, and, ch and more affordable. Right. You know, and I was watching, a, a, like I watched the BBC News, mm -hmm. Chief, in London, Every street just That's about correct. has a camera. That's Every correct. single street. My wife is from England. We go to England uh, regularly, and uh, yeah, that's a way of life in England. Now, bear in mind, they've had a much stronger terrorism presence right. for many, many years. But they carry less guns. I mean, the police, how they carry any guns at all? They're, correct. The, the, the rank of file pol uh, police officers don't carry guns, but there are specialized units that, that oh, do. do. Oh, they do? Oh, they certainly do. Yeah, they're, and they're gun crime, their gun crimes are rising as well. I have a lot of friends that are uh, English police that uh, I, I visit with when I'm there. Some of my wife's family are, are retired from the police department and they, they stay current. So it, it's, um, it's, they, they, they have similar trends that we do. Right. Now I got to take you and make you where you really became a hero for the city of Boston and Revere. On the Boston Marathon, mm -hmm. they say yes and no. But, but you were there. That uh, Joker was the one that ran over his brother and dragged him for about 60 feet, who was the one that actually put, killed his brother, even though the police shot him. But it was Joker. Car. Is that the fact? Or was, was he run over? You know, I haven't been privy to any of the final reports on that. That, that, seems, that seems to be what the, uh, the outcome was. But now, bear in mind, he wasn't just lying alone in the street. There was officers that were either oh. attending to his wounds and trying to subdue Oh, before? Places. Before? And I think Joe was probably trying to run down the officers. His brother, he knew, was, uh, it was probably going to succumb to his injuries, and um, he had already written him off. So I, 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 would, I would have to theorize that he was trying to take out the police officers that were attending to his brother. I think you're, uh, that's what I heard someone else say too. Now, how did you people first know that Joka was in that boat? Uh, apparently, the homeowner and the boat owner, as it were, um, noticed that the ladder was up on the side of the boat and he didn't leave it there. He went out to investigate and saw that the the opening, the boat was opened up and he hadn't left it open. Apparently, he, I think he saw some blood or whatnot. And when he, he looked inside and saw him. Oh, he saw him. And that's, from what I've been told, that's when he went and uh, he called 911. Um, some police officers responded. There was some sort of an exchange of gunfire that had taken place. Um, at that point, a call went out for tactical teams to respond. And uh, we happened to be, at that point, working in conjunction with the Boston police SWAT team. So we followed them in trace to the the house on Franklin Street, and that's where uh, we captured him. Oh, we were part of the, the arrest right. team. That's where he was captured, I should say. I got to ask you this to Chief Caffarelli. They had a helicopter out there with a mm -hmm. heat sensor that they could actually look down from above and see that there was an outline of a body in that boat with the equipment they have, that's even correct. though you and I couldn't see it? That's correct. That's correct. I saw some the of that footage afterwards. Too. Well, that's, um, you know, again, it, that's a sign of the times. It's thermal imagery. That's the word. Thank you. And I, 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 had, I, had seen, I had seen it after the fact. I didn't, you know, we weren't privy to any of that at the time. But after the fact, you know, I was, I, I saw it before it came out in the press, and I was able to, you know, you, you can make out the fact that there is somebody laying in the boat. It, you know, it gives off its own unique heat signature. Oh, that's pretty and good. That's technology. I mean, there's, uh, that's what it's there for. Right. Now I got to ask you this: the kids that go to school in Revere, mm -hmm. they are good kids. Do you have many problems with some of them? If I'm, I, I, minor ones. I don't want you to. Not many. Um, not no. Nah, you, you know, uh, most of the kids are good kids. They're going to school I for all the right you. reasons, yeah, and they got a, a. It's a great school system. Dr. Dakin is doing a fantastic job. Number uh, one superintendent in the Commonwealth. For a, and for a good reason too. Uh, he he certainly earned it. Um, 
We have a couple of officers assigned to the schools as uh, school resource officers. And they're, not, they're not there to, make, to lock up kids. No, they're, they're there, they provide a, uh, more of a mentorship to right, a lot of the I kids. Get it. When I was a kid in New York, when we used to go to school, and the police didn't ride around in the cars on my mm -hmm. day. They were out in the streets. I would say, good morning, officer, and he would say, good morning, son, and good mm -hmm. morning to me. Then some of them would come up in our classrooms and mm -hmm. talk about different things, you know, what to do, what not to do, what's legal, what is illegal. We used to love that, and you people, police still do that, I believe. We try to. That's uh, part of the role of our, our school resource, <coughs> resource officers, um, to just reach out to the kids and, and, and be, uh, be accessible. To right. kids and starting from a, an early age, let them know that the, the police are there to help them uh, in, in any way that we can. Right. Uh, by the, uh, I got to tell you, if it wasn't for the police, you'd have anarchy in every town. I, so, I'd agree with you. Uh, so the police protect the community. So I guess, by the way, we got about uh, six, seven minutes left. Sure. Take about four minutes and re say whatever you like to about Revere, yourself, your family. Ah, it's, it's whatever you, wish. you know. It's a great, it's a great town to work in. It's a, it's a great town to be a, be a police officer in. I've, I've enjoyed my career. I've every minute of it, um, and I encourage all, uh, young officers coming on the job to do the same. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of good work, but it's rewarding work. Um, and it's dangerous work. It, it has its moments. You know, it, it, it does. You know, it, there's far more dangerous jobs. You know, running around Iraq and Afghanistan right now is yeah dangerous. We had, uh, oh, excuse me, we have Mr. Stephen Leon over here who won the Bronze Star in Afghanistan. God bless. And he was telling me that we also had another gentleman, by the way. I, I just want to make a distinguish from Mr. Paul Monty, St. Jared Monty, who got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He mm -hmm. wanted to be a police officer, but he got killed in um, Afghanistan, not Vietnam. Correct. I'm Correct. sorry, Afghanistan. Stevie also did the same thing. The only difference was Stevie came back alive. Jared didn't in there, mm -hmm. but Jared did. His father told me that he would have loved to have been a police officer when he got out. And he probably would have been a great police officer yeah. as well, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. So we have some real great heroes, and I believe that some of the police belong just with him, Chief. I really you know, do. yeah, you 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 call me a hero. You are a hero. No, no, uh, you know, you're a hero of the community. No, let me tell you, we have heroes, and we have hero of heroes. A, a, a wiser man than me once said, you know, I'm not a hero, but I served in the company of, of heroes. And that's what I do. Right. But someone distinguishes himself above and beyond that word of hero. That's why we have the Congressional Medal of Honor. Many officers uh, let have. Let me tell you. I've, I've had many brave. Officer Mullen, for, for instance. Uh, you know, right. when, when we went to Watertown, I'm wearing full body armor. I'm carrying a rifle, and I have uh, the, the force of my entire SWAT team behind me. Officer Mullen jumped the fence, saved a little, uh, that boy that was being attacked by two Rottweilers alone. That's a hero. That, yep. So, you know, you, it's, it's um, there's plenty of heroes here. There's plenty of heroes, and not just in police officers. The teachers are heroes. Firemen are heroes. Oh, definitely, um, definitely. Mom and dad that get up and go to work and support their family are heroes. That's right. You know, the, you don't need to have a, a multi-million dollar sports contract to be a hero. That's right. No, I like the way you put that, Chief. <laughs> Maybe you should be sitting there. No, <laughs> it's, it's, I got one day to shine. You, you, you've got many. You've got many. By the way, I got to say this. I don't care. I, I'm going to embarrass you again. Go anyway, ahead. you are a hero. Why heroes stop now? To me. <laughs> you are a hero, heroes to me, really. Because anyone that can put their life on the line, not, I mean, and for the boss of Marathon, nuts, but for also our city, also being in the service, you are a hero, and I want to thank you. Thank for you for your service here. to Mars. Thank God you. bless you, Chief. And it was a pleasure to have the you here, The pleasure is sir. mine. Thank you. God bless our troops. God exactly. bless the people of Revere, the United States of America. And God bless our Revere Fire Department and Police Department. And thank you, folks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.